Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to jump on the determinism free will bandwagon, although it's pretty much reached the station. I'm probably mixing metaphors there. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to put in my five cents. I know that at this stage, pretty much everyone has had their say anyways, and you James has moved on, as have probably most of the other people that uh, made a response to you James. I'm not going to direct this video to you James, but I'll just put it out on my channel. But in brief, you James made a video, um, I guess two weeks ago, something like that, uh, where he was fairly dismissive of determinists, and that kind of caused an outpouring of pro-determinist fervor. Um, and I'm not really going to be responding to you, James, or his video, or his points, but more just uh, saying some things, because I, I've made some videos about it in the past. Um, but, you know, um, so I'd probably be repeating myself a little bit, but just some thoughts on the topic. Um, and my first thought is the, the definitions. I think, I think it's all a matter of definition. Um, not to you, James. I mean, you, James, almost seems to be like a hard... Um, free will advocate um, and if you watch some of his videos he says things like you know anyone has like um, in his video about indoctrination which he's re-uploaded recently he suggests that it's up to anyone basically to make the free choice to stop listening to indoctrination which implies a very free will I mean it, he basically in that video implies that the circumstances don't matter your genetics don't matter. Uh, once you're an adult, you can just say, nope, I refuse to be indoctrinated anymore. Um, and I don't really buy that. Um, but you, James, seems to be a very strong free will advocate. I myself don't believe in free will at all. I believe that it's an illusion. But the thing is, um, so you would call, the thing is, I'm not necessarily, I don't, hinge this on determinism um, so I'm happy to become an indeterminist but still reject free will the reason for that is uh, determinism basically if you had precise enough instrumentation or knowledge of the or th knowledge of the universe even if that knowledge is actually unobtainable in the real world then you could calculate and predict everything that's going to happen in the universe I mean I guess that's determinism now the thing is, and I'm not actually too sure about the exact kind of um, natural sciences viewpoint on this because I've heard it explained in different ways and to be honest, I just haven't, like, I haven't, <laughs> I've heard it explained two different ways and I haven't checked up enough, but it seemed to be the kind of uh, some people suggest that randomness really exists in the universe and other people suggest that randomness uh, randomness doesn't really exist but it's just that we influence things by looking at them so we can't really measure them so it's not really random but we can't measure it because by measuring it we change it um, so in the first case we would have randomness in the second case we wouldn't in the second case you could just have hard determinism and you're pretty much done but in the first case, obviously, if there were randomness, you couldn't have hard determinism because it wouldn't make any sense. Um, because you couldn't actually predict that the event would not be determined in advance if there was randomness. Um, now, an event would still be mostly determined as long as that randomness was kind of mostly subsumed by like laws of big numbers, for example. Um, so, you know, if it's uh, some kind of a quantum indeterminacy, uh, I'm thinking that, in fact, that won't actually make things too much more random, because given the huge amount of molecules or whatever that make up something, um, you can probably kind of determine the average quantum states or something like that. I, I don't know, but it might be that it's not actually that relevant, but even if it is, obviously that would then make 
you an indeterminist because you would suggest you can't determine the state of the universe given the present. But that really does nothing for free will. Um, that by itself, <laughs> it just means that instead of being determined from the beginning of time, um, it means that <laughs> you're basically uh, left up to random chance. Um, which I, I guess people might find slightly more satisfying because people really don't seem to like this idea of having been set in stone from the beginning of time. But to me, really, it makes almost no difference. Um, so we, what you do is, to some extent, random. That, that's... yay. Um, and, and, I mean, I have read, so... I've actually... I did... I have to admit, like, before on my last determinism videos, I went to the um, philosophy... What is it? The... Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and they have a really big entry on um, compatibilism and free will and I read through um, as much of that as I managed back then um, but this time I, I wikipedia it I just don't have enough time and I didn't really follow up too much so I can't really say whether I'm gonna be um, kind of skewering this guy's opinion but I was going through this material and apparently there are seems to be a, a libertarian philosopher, as in a right libertarian philosopher who supports, or maybe not even right libertarian, but maybe was libertarian in terms of free will, which means he believes in free will. Um, but he was saying that this uh, randomness uh, shows that there is free will, uh, w which is absurd because obviously you don't choose the way in which this randomness develops I mean this randomness <laughs> will make you random but it won't give you any free will unless you could influence the way in which these random things happen and then what will do the influencing and I mean that's fundamentally my problem with you know so to start off with even if I'm even if there's evidence for indeterminism I'll still not believe in free will uh, and then we get to various kind of um, various attempts at um, I guess salvaging free will and uh, I mean to me the root problem with free will is it's always gets you into this conundrum of this kind of infinite regress I mean if this is you know if like if you're choosing to do this then where does that choice come from and then where does that choice that made you choose that choice come from and either you see that as this kind of cause of uh, this kind of causal chain which eventually um, it terminates at the point you were born um, or it's this infinite regress which makes no sense to me that's how I see it um, as for compatibilism uh, well, to me it seems like, I, who was it, Heidegger, there's that famous phrase that's basically, um, uh, you can do what you will, but you can't will what you will. Um, so you can do what you want to do, but you can't choose the kind of person you are and what it is that you want to do. Um, and then that seems to be the attempt of making free will mean free action rather than what I would consider free will. I would consider free will you just being able to be free in in determining what your will is somehow. Um, and I think that's just impossible. It's, it's like it's logically doesn't make any sense to me. And this free action thing, I mean fine you can free action and then you can call that free will but uh, to me that you know that that sounds to me like what compatibilism is it's like somehow trying to elevate free action to um, that sacred position of free will because people really 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 want to have free will um, but to me it doesn't really make any sense I mean so you happen to be the person you happen to be uh, yay or no depending on what the situation is um, and you know, that, so maybe you're the person you are, 
and that makes you be able to change to a better person. Yay! Or maybe you're the person you are and you don't have the strength and your experiences haven't given you the tools to become a better person. Aww. But in either case, where, whereas, you know, this free will thing, it's never made any sense to me. Compatibilism seems to be trying to play word games um, to keep the hope alive. Um, and, you know, I'm fine with compatibilism. I'm fine with saying that free free action or free choice is an interesting, valuable thing that we should consider. Um, but I don't see why we need to call it free will. I, I don't really see the point in that. Um, and the final note, um, because I made this two-parter where there was going to be a third part um, about free will a while ago, and the part I never made was the one about the ethical implications. And to me, yes, the ethical implications, the moral, the philosophical implications of no free will is that in one sense, at least, in the ultimate sense, um, there is, in fact, no entity that you can hold responsible for actions because it's all either determined or random. But that obviously, as many people have pointed out, doesn't mean that you just need to let people do whatever they want to do. Um, because we understand that we should limit people's actions or punish them in order to um, to create this mix of circumstances where people will act better or act less bad. Um, and so that's all part of this um, it's all part of this mix. Obviously, if we're saying that everything's cause and effect, then it's important to look at uh, what effects we're producing and what the causes are and to try to modify those. And when I say to try to modify those, you know, oh, you're using free will. No, I'm just, I want to modify these things out of coming from the person I am. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's no real big controversy there. Um, but I do think, final thought, um, that it does mean that once we acknowledge, or, you know, I mean, you don't have to acknowledge, obviously you can disagree with me, but if, if we accepted that there really was no such thing as free will, the best we can do is free choice, and we want to hold people um, morally responsible because otherwise society will break down, um, we can do all that, but still with the realization that ultimately it should be about um, helping people and changing people to be better people um, rather than punishing people um, and blaming people for things. That we should be looking for the causes rather than for evil in the world. That we should be trying to address and fix causes rather than trying to dig out and eliminate evil people or or you know I mean the alternative to eliminating them is just telling them you behave good right now um, that seems to be the kind of free will way you be good or we kick your ass but obviously from a less free will perspective um, if the causes are there for them not to change to stay a bad person they're gonna stay a bad person so to me it's the more rational approach as well um, it makes more sense to me in every way. And honestly, I mean, you know, I, I see that a lot of people really like this idea of free will. They feel like their life will be devalued without it. To me, it's always somehow deep down, it's always, and you know, I, you can draw whatever conclusions you want from that, but it's always been, um, I've always been comfortable with that thought that I am in some way determined and not free in in uh, choosing who I am and who uh, and how I behave entirely. Um, that there is this kind of this kind of uh, cause for the person I am. I've always been comfortable with that, um, and always having been comfortable with that, I I I just 
exist and accept those things. Um, and I still make my ethical judgments, I guess you could say. I still have opinions on what we should do with people and how we should run the world and what we should allow people to do and what we should um, take people away for and like secure them somewhere so they don't hurt other people for. I still have all of those opinions despite the fact that um, I have absolutely no belief uh, in free will. And you know, to me, it's it's not made my life miserable or sad or depressing. Um, I don't know. Just I just keep doing what I'm doing, um, and the thought that it's probably because that's the type of person um, that my genes and my experiences make me doesn't really change that at all. Um, it helps me not hate myself for my flaws and it makes me stay real and uh, not get a big head about whatever um, whatever positive sides I might have and I think that's a good thing anyways I'll see you guys all later